opportunity to welcome each of you here to this community meeting here at Oak Leaf Junior High School. My name is David Broski. I'm superintendent of schools here in Clay County. I'm excited to be here to answer all the questions that you might have about this process leading us into next school year. Before I do that, I want to kind of introduce the people that are in the room. We brought a whole team of people from the district. We realize you might have questions. What we ask you to do is if you have a question in order to make sure that we record the question, uh, and have it for posterity, there's a card there. So if you need a, to ask a question, if you would go ahead and raise your hand, Ms. Watt will come around, she'll give you the card. You simply fill out the question, we'll go ahead and we'll answer them at the end. So today we're gonna do a couple of different things. We're gonna give a, a little bit of a presentation on growth, as well as you guys all know that from living out here in, in Oakley. We'll give a presentation on growth and the district plans to, to address that. Then we're going to have the principal of Oak Leaf Junior High come and talk a little bit about the programs here at Oak Leaf Junior High. And then we're going to answer any questions we have. The whole process should take about an hour. Okay, so that's kind of the game plan for today. But I, we do have some folks here that I do want to introduce. First, we have our school board members. We have Miss Beth Clark. Ms. Clark, if you would stand up or raise, raise your hand. We also have Michelle Hansen, school board member. Up here, we, we do have Wilnitra Dixon, who is the principal here at Oak Leaf Junior High. Dixon. We have Treasure Pickett, who is the chief of secondary education for our district. Then these three folks are from our operations department. We have Bryce Ellis, who is the assistant superintendent for operations, so she's the boss of that department. Lance Addison, who is the director. And then we have the supervisor, Paul Beaman. Paul, Paul actually is going to talk to you in a minute about growth. Let me just say this. You should have all received a letter or a robocall. How many people, is there anybody in here that didn't receive any communication and just showed up? Because I did have in another meeting, a person should sit there and they go, is this affect me? And they explain where they lived and I had to say, no, it doesn't affect you. So just so you know, Every family that was affected received a letter in the mail and a robocall. Sometimes the robocalls, people hang up before they actually listen to the robocall. So we promise you, we, we attempted to send a robocall as well as a letter to you. So you should have had that. Then you know you're in the right meeting, okay? So without further ado, we're going to kick it off and let Paul give a presentation related to, to growth. And then we'll have we'll need to give a presentation related to that, and then we'll come back and we'll answer questions you might have. So, Mr. Beeman, if you come on up. Thank you, Mr. Broski. Thank you all for coming tonight. I'm excited to be able to share this data with you. My role in the uh, school district is to gather data uh, from growth and various other sources and help guide the district in decision making with a relation to where new schools go, or how do we balance students and capacities at school, and things of that nature. So what I'd like to do tonight, real quick, is, is to spend a little few minutes just telling you about how we arrived at the decision that you saw on that, that letter and the recommendation we put to the school board. What I want to briefly touch on is the growth that Mr. Broski mentioned just a few moments ago. And I want to also to tell you about the recommended solution and then finally, uh, how does it affect you? That's the most important part and I'm sure that's what you're all wondering. Now you guys, I mean, you guys are familiar with the growth in this area. You can't drive up and down the tollway without seeing the land being cleared and the homes being built. And what I have on this slide here are uh, the elementary school zones and those big black objects that are sitting there, those are all the active developments in the area. Now these aren't developments that are done, these are developments that are coming. So this is growth that's gonna take place uh, over the next three to eight years and that we need to get prepared for. You can see it goes up and down the uh, east side of the 23 corridor uh, in o the Oakley Village area. And when you look at tines or you look at plantation oaks, there's still a lot of undeveloped land there. And I guarantee you, everybody wants to live in Clay County and there's developers lining up to develop that land. So 
Uh, this is just the beginning, and we want to be prepared for it. So how do we do so in a way that optimizes school district resources but doesn't drastically affect families and children in the district? We had to try to find that balancing act because this is a very emotional topic. A lot of people, uh, either change is tough. I mean, your, your child used to going to one school, now they gotta go to another. And I wanted to assure you that before we made this recommendation, we took a lot of factors into consideration. First and foremost, the input from the board. And then we, we took input from data. I mean, we have growth data, we have um, uh, various metrics and uh, information provided by the Florida Dis uh, Department of Education and other, and other factors. And we, we wanted to make sure that we made this a, a decision that had no emotion in it, but just based on facts and input. So as we looked at the options, we wanted to make sure we hit five areas. One was, does it simplify transportation? Two, does it relieve capacity? Does it re reduce portables? Does it address growth? And finally, is it fiscally responsible? Does it use the money and taxpayer money for the district responsibly um, in its execution? One of the options we considered was status quo. Hey, let's not do anything. Let's just wait and see. Well, that would solve a portable problem, it, it doesn't solve all the issues that we need to address. The second item is build a new school. That seems like a great idea. Hey, a new school would, would solve this problem. The bad news, though, is it only solves it from one area. And on top of that, it's very expensive. In Duval County, uh, they're putting a new elementary school and it's, it's more than $50 million for one school. And that would only solve one area. So it's, it's also not a short-term solution very much a long term, it's a long process to build a school. So, uh, well that too would re reduce portables, it, it isn't the best solution. What we came to in our analysis is to move the sixth grades to the junior high. And that's, that's why you're here today. So what does that mean for, you, for your children? Well, if you are, uh, in the Oak Leaf area, and I'll, I'll go into what that area is in a moment, um, you would start going to Oak Leaf Junior High for sixth grade. Now this school has plenty of capacity, just as it is, to uh, handle the in incoming students. Uh, however, as you all know, if you look outside, you'll see a huge building being built. That's a 32 classroom addition that'll be ready for the beginning of next year. And uh, that will not only set the school up for the, the growth of the incoming um, sixth graders, but also for the, the development growth that we saw on the previous slide. So taking a step back, these are the boundaries as they currently sit for the elementary schools and the junior high schools. Plantation Oaks, Discovery Oaks, Oakley Village, they're like pieces of a puzzle that fit perfectly in the Oak Leaf Junior High zone. So your fifth grader, or your sixth, future sixth grader, will go to Oak Leaf Junior High next year. Where things get a little more interesting is when we go into Tynes and Coppergate. If you remember those slides that I showed earlier, all that growth occurring uh, to the east of the tollway, well that's what we're trying to figure out, and this is how we decided to, order to uh, address it. First of all, let's talk about Coppergate. How many families are here that are um, currently going to Coppergate Elementary? Okay, so this, this is for you. And, and it gets a little complicated, so if you have any questions, I'm gonna give you some links for some more information, or you can always reach out to me. But I'm gonna try to explain it quickly. As you can see, the Coppergate there in the orange, that's bisected by Lake Asbury Junior High. So a north portion, is in the Mokinson Junior High Zone, and the south portion is the Lake Asbury Junior High Zone. Well, there is uh, no sixth grade offer to, offered at Wilkinson Junior High, and there's no sixth grade capacity at times. So we have to figure out how do we uh, address those students at Coppergate, because that school is having a capacity issue 
uh, now and then expected in the future. With respect to Tynes, I'm asked the same question. How many families are here from the Tynes Elementary? Okay, I see a few hands. Okay, so this is Tynes, and as you'll see, there's a portion of Tynes Elementary that is just to the east of the tollway. That uh, uh, portion is north of Coppergate, it shows here. And as you'll know, I mean, Coppergate, or, sorry, Tynes has its own share of capacity problems right now. It's, it's very uh, full. And um, with respect to sixth grade, well, it's just not offered, it will get to junior. Furthermore, uh, there are significant transportation times. Just to get from, from Tynes, in this portion of the, of the, of the uh, zone down here, it takes a long time. And then if you want to get to Wilkins in Junior High from here, it's a 40 minute bus ride. That's a, long, that's a long time for your child to be on the bus. So our solution is to extend the uh, Oak Leaf Junior High Zone down to Blanding Boulevard in, uh, from the tollway east. So that uh, this um, in, in a conjunction with uh, changing the eastern edge of Wilkinson Jr. Which are the recommended changes that we've placed to the board. So the big question, is my child affected? If your child is a fifth grader attending Oak Leaf Village, Discovery Oaks, or Plantation Oaks, and they're a fifth grader, they will go to Oak Leaf Junior High next year for sixth grade. If they're a fifth or sixth grader, in Tynes Elementary or Coppergate Elementary currently with a property with a home address that's north of Blanding and east of the tollway then they would be zoned for Oak Leaf Junior High next year. So this there's a lot of data in this slide but it's a good summary and uh, what we have on the left hand side is the elementary schools before so we have all of them are currently providing K through six education. On the, in the middle, we have the new Oak Leaf and El Lake Asbury Junior High schools that are going to provide six to eight. So 100% of Discovery Oaks, Oak Leaf Village, Plantation Oaks, uh, current or future sixth grade students will go to Oak Leaf. A portion of Tynes will go to Oak Leaf and then with respect to Coppergate, while all uh, future sixth grade students will go to um, an elementary school. Some will go to Lake Asbury, and some will go to Oak Leaf. So on the right hand side, uh, all schools in the list, except for Tides, will no longer offer a sixth grade education. But this is not new ground that we're forging here. The, Six to eight a grade approach is used in 65 of 67 school districts in the state of Florida. So this is something that, that's usable to a high extent. It's uh, a tried and true practice. And uh, as a result, we think it was the way to go for our uh, growth and capacity issues. Now on here we have a QR code and that will help you get to a website where it explains the changes, as well as a map, and then a more detailed diagram to help you kind of navigate the, the change. But if you still have more questions, you can email me or give me a call, and I'm happy to help you out. And with that, I'll hand it over to Ms. Dixon. Just to, not only is it done in 65 of the 67 counties, it was done right here at Oak Leaf not that long ago. Any, any parents that were here during that time where, okay, so you, you know, this isn't new ground. You know, the, the reality is when dealing with capacity, you need to go ahead and sometimes reconfigure the schools in order to serve all the students that we serve. So just a reminder, uh, I've only gotten one question so far, and I know this is a group that's got a lot of questions, right? So if you do have a question, please raise your hand. We'll, we'll get a card out to you so that you can uh, ask, the, ask the question that you want to ask through the card. So Ms. Watt is right here. She's ready to give you a card. Raise your hand. 
the gap. Now, we will, all these folks, we're going to stay after, because you might have sat there and you said, you know, I live here, I'm not really sure if that's me on that map. Okay, Mr. Beam and his group will be up there after this presentation also. But if I was a parent, and, and both of my children, by the way, went through a six through eight configuration, uh, middle school type of environment, so I'm, I'm quite familiar with it. Now, if I was a parent, what I'd be thinking, will this school take care of my child, right? Ultimately, that's what it all comes down to. Like, you want to make sure. I can think of no better person to lead this school than Monitra Dixon. Don't want to say anything, but she is Clay County's Principal of the Year last year. We just reigned a new one. So, you, you are in really great hands when it comes to that. So I realize there's always a little bit of nervousness with the newness to it, but this is a tried and true method. I'm going to turn it over to Miss Dixon, who will lead us through this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Broski. Good afternoon. I am Walitra Dixon. I am the proud principal here at Oak Leaf Junior High School. And we look forward to sharing all of the wonderful opportunities that we have here. And so we will start with just an introduction about uh, of myself. I am I came into, uh, moved to Clay County in 2003, started as a teacher at Green Coast Springs Junior High School. Afterwards, I was a teacher at Thunderbolt Elementary School. Then I became an assistant principal at Thunderbolt Elementary School, then moved to Argyle Elementary as an assistant principal. Then I was the principal at Oakley Village Elementary School, so I know there are some families who may know me from OBE. <laughs> So good to see everyone. And then, of course, this is my third year here at Oak Leaf Junior High School. So we call, we refer to Oak Leaf Junior High School as the Hive, and you'll see here our administration team. Um, Mr. Josh Freeman is over there at the table. He is um, the assistant principal who works with scheduling and our pre ace program. We have Mrs. Florence LaFontant in the back there, seventh grade administrator. We have Mr. Uh, Michael Elia, who could not be with us tonight. He's our eighth grade administrator. And then, of course, as we, oh, yes. Thank you. That's my help. Thank you. This is my help right here. This is clicker. And so as we continue to look down at our student and family support here, we have uh, Mr. Carnell Penn is our dean of um, students here at Oak Leaf Junior High. We have Aaliyah Box, we have Natasha Horn and Ms. Valerie Ortiz. We have three school counselors here to take care of our students. Uh, we do have a military family life counselor who is very active. So we do, we are proud of our military families here at Oak Leaf Junior High School. And we, our students do participate in Lunch Bunch, um, check-ins from Ms. Wilton, and of course we have various programs that occur throughout the year. So you will hear from Ms. Wilton as well, or as the students are, call her Ms. Brittany. Ms. Coombs is our social worker. Over at the table, we have Ms. Heather Nemo Olson is one of our athletic directors. And then, of course, um, Coach Penn is also one of our athletic directors. He is at a basketball game in Baker County tonight, so he cannot be with us. So here at the high, honor, integrity, value, and excellence is what students hear every day. They hear it in the morning announcements. They hear it on the way home. And just really finding honor and all that they do and their peers, integrity, doing the right thing, even when no one is looking, our value, finding value in themselves and others, and then learning. In junior high, there's so many opportunities for growth, is what I refer to them as. It's a learning experience for our kids and adults as well. So finding value and then, of course, excellent. All excellence, always doing your best. Be your best. Show your best at all times. So here, I'll say this. We have an, a team of professionals who are actively, who they, active, they actively collaborate to provide a safe, fun, and engaging learning environment for our students. And so what you see here, core ten, we've, as a result, core content area success, an award-winning academic team, award-winning band program here, and of course, sports as well. An amazing community of students with infinite potential is what we have here at Oak Leaf Junior High. So some of our highlights here are when we looked at our seventh grade uh, performance, um, performance matters, uh, fast assessment, I'm going back in time here, fast assessment at the end of last year, first in the district with seventh grade ELA, we saw a 14% increase in student proficiency. Of course, we had some great gains there with student proficiency in eighth grade ELA at 
And then of course, look at that algebra and geometry, 96% proficiency in 100 percent proficiency in our geometry classes here. And of course, we have a variety of CTE courses. Of course, we have a table in the back as well, Mr. Williams and Mrs. Britt, where students have that opportunity um, to participate in so many uh, classes, aerospace, agri-science or agriculture, business education, where we have our business keyboarding classes and our career clusters course. So someone may ask, what is orientation to career clusters? And it's a class where students are introduced to the major career tracks within the state of Florida. So they get to learn a little bit about careers as, um, as right now as seventh graders and eighth graders. And then they move right into our business keyboarding classes. We have coding classes, uh, digital information technology, family consumer science, which many of us may know as home economics, right? Back in the day, and then of course, Fashion design is very popular, and we have our technology classes as well. Additional electives include art, band, which many of you heard our jazz band perform here. Mr. Summers is here as well. He's right at that table. We have information as well. And uh, we have keyboarding, which is piano keyboarding, our music appreciation class, physical education, exploring Spanish, TV production, and of course, yearbook. And Ms. Baum's over on the that table as well if you have questions uh, before you leave. All right. So what are we doing to prepare? Mr. Brosky mentioned that, right? Thinking about moving into junior high. It is a very important time and we, you trust us with your children and that means a lot to us. So we try our best. We work as hard as we can to make sure our students are prepared. With that includes vertical collaboration with our elementary schools who are our feeder schools. We begin that back, we begin that in January. Um, it's, it's very important for us to have those conversations. And then last year we had the opportunity to bring students from our feeder schools over on a bus. And they had the opportunity to walk our halls, meet us in person, meet our coaches, because a lot of kids, what do you think they're interested in? Sports, right? The clubs, the electives. And so students had a chance to ask those questions, see the animals in our agriculture area. Yes, we do have animals, cows, pigs goats, chickens, rabbits, we do. And our students um, within the agriculture classes have that opportunity to learn the skills as far as taking, learning about those animals and taking care, and they know so much more than I do um, about that area, but then also participation in the Clay County Fair, which is huge uh, for our students. And then of course, so on the flyer that you should have received coming in, if you did not receive one, we have extras. Our school expo is on there, it's February 27th. It'll be an opportunity for you to come out and see. We'll have our tables set up. We'll have even more tables to learn a little more about Oak Leaf Junior High School. And of course, our programs like our amazing band as well. Of course, we'll pull all the programs out so that you can learn more about the opportunities here for your child. Okay. Um, of course, we'll have the rising as the kids rise up, move up to junior high. That course selection assembly, that was uh, the opportunity that we had for kids to come to us to uh, learn a little bit about our, our school, and they had the opportunity to walk the halls. So they, it wasn't, so the first day of school or orientation was not their first day on campus, and that's huge. We have our Buzz and Web, Buzz Camp, Web Crew uh, Camp, and it's during the summertime, so it's an opportunity for students to spend a few hours with us, about a half day, and they make connections with other students from different schools who are coming to our school for the first time. And the wonderful thing about that is we have eighth grade students who are trained by our teachers who collaborate and they connect with the kids. There is a lot of team building there. Students have tours around campus that they can participate in. And then also they get to ask the questions. They get the, you know, the sneak peek into the school. So it's a great opportunity. So once school starts, students have already, you would have already made those connections with other peers. And that's so important coming into a new school uh, in junior high. We have, of course, in August, usually right before school starts, and that's on the flyer, um, our orientation where families will have the opportunity to walk the campus together and get to meet our teachers. And then, of course, after school starts, we will host our open house. So we have a couple of pictures here. So I mentioned Buzz Camp, right? The half day where kids get to come out and make connections and participate in team building activities. And so that's a picture. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, that's only half of the kids, right? We had a full crew in there. And then, of course, the picture to the bottom, our teachers working because it's trained the eighth grade students to serve as mentors and make those connections with our kids. And 
Of course, with that, we, we talk about honor, integrity, value, and excellence here in the Hive. We are proud to be a PBIS Silver School as a model school here. So let's move beyond the classroom. We have so many activities there outlined on the flyer there, but um, American Sign Language is new this year and it is so popular we had to add chairs to the classroom. So it's amazing opportunities for kids to connect and learn with their peers outside of that structured classroom. Um, Battle of the Books is new for us. Our media specialist, Mrs. Bowman, is working closely with students and we already have our teams and Ms. Rowland is in the back. If you have any questions, she has a table, so feel free to stop by before you leave. Uh, we have our Connect Color Guard, which is, works in collaboration with Oakley High School. So we talk about those vertical connections, not only with our feeder schools from elementary, but also the high school as well. Chess Club, we have a chess club, which is new this year. And it's so cool because on Thursdays, kids come in and they play chess. And we have several teachers who have, um, who know, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, pretty good. So they drop in. And so those are connections with kids. Um, that we experience even before the bell rings for the school day to start. Comic Club, we have Crew, Dungeons and Dragons, our Future Farmers of America, also known as FFA, uh, Lady Stingers, our math team, National Junior Honor Society, Robotics, and of course, Student Council. All right, athletics, that's the kids ask about athletics all the time, and so we have um, baseball, basketball, cheerleading. We have a boys and girls cross country team here, so we're so proud of that uh, program that we have here. Flag football, football, soccer, softball, track and field, volleyball, and wrestling. So there are a lot of fun times here at the Hive, right? We take pride in our academic success, but then also we think about the whole child providing additional opportunities for students to highlight those gifts, talents, interests that they may have. And so band and course concerts. So you had a chance to hear the jazz band. Of course, we have from beginning band all the way up to that jazz band for students to um, learn from. We have awesome band directors, Mr. Summers and Ms. Mari. Family engagement nights. Ms. LaFontaine works closely with our team to come up with family engagement nights. Last year, we had family feud. Um, a lot of fun, right? A lot of fun. And so look out for those family engagement nights so that you'll have a chance to connect with us outside of school hours with your families. Field trips. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Baum is in the back there. Last year we hosted a trip to Washington, D.C. So we took kids to Washington, D.C. for a week. Well, it was Tuesday through Saturday. It was an amazing time. And when the parents came back, we had quite a few chaperones. We asked for feedback. And they were like, we need two more days should have been longer. So it was an amazing trip, it was a success. And so um, that is also happening again this year, our trip to DC in February, um, a trip to Kennedy Space Center. So when we think about academics and we put an emphasis on cross-curricular uh, connections. So our English language arts department has collaborated in looking at their standards and making those connections with science with a um, trip to Kennedy Space Center in March. Of course, SeaWorld, usually our FFA and our yearbook journalism, um, TV production classes will uh, go there to SeaWorld. Clay County Fair, for the most part, with our students who are in our agriculture classes and FFA, as well as our eighth grade grad adventure is a new adventure for us this year at Universal Studios. Other fun times include honor roll celebrations that we have here during lunchtime for our students who earn honor roll every quarter. We do have our Lady Stinker Tea in, in the spring that's hosted by a couple of our teachers here. And then we have the Oakley Community Christmas Parade. It was our first time, the first parade last year. We had a great time participating and we look forward to doing that again as a school this year. Picnics at the end of the year, school dances. We already had our glow party, so that was the first school dance of the year. We've already started with the plans for our next dance in February. And of course, skate night is always a good time. I do not skate, but the kids look forward to giving me lessons, and so I'm not good at all. So it's a really way, good way to connect with our kids and have a little bit of fun. And of course, our spirit weeks. Uh, we wrapped up Red Ribbon Week back in October. Of course, we will have a spirit week in recognition of our military families during the month of the military child. And then of course, we do that during the week right before the holiday break. So we have fun times here. Um, academic success is very important, but we look at the whole child to provide that full experience. And of course, this is a picture of the bulletin board that we put up every year at the beginning of the year. So it's important. So 
in case no one told you today, hello, welcome, you are important. You belong here, you rock, you are awesome. We appreciate your time. All right, as you can see, a lot of exciting things happening here at Oak Leaf Junior High School. One of the things I've always appreciated about the Oak Leaf community is it truly is a community, community school. Back in a different lifetime, I was actually principal next door at the high school. That's why I might look familiar. And also Ms. Pickett, principal of Oak Leaf High School also. So we're very familiar with the Oak Leaf community. So one of the th other areas that we're uh, having to deal with growth and capacity is, is, is the Lake Asbury area, which is also growing. So one of the, the most popular questions at that meeting, we had a meeting there Monday, and now we're meeting here on Wednesday, was parents were worried, hey, fifth grade, uh, you know, sixth grade, there's usually traditions to end elementary school, like a graduation, events of that nature. We're, we're meeting to go ahead and make sure that those opportunities are provided for your child too. Again, trying to think of everything related to this particular issue. I just tell you, uh, for my two children, we, we went through meetings like this and were rezoned three times during their academic career. So, so I'm quite familiar being on the other side of this as well as this. I can promise you this, we're gonna work tirelessly to make this as seamless as possible you know, for your child. Now, I'm gonna compliment this group because this group only had four questions. Okay, five questions. So, so I want you to know that if you, if you don't wanna ask your question out loud, that's good. We're gonna be here afterwards, after these five questions or six questions, whatever it winds up being, we're gonna be here to answer any questions you might have right after that. So with that in mind, some of these questions are, are, uh, are softballs that I can answer myself, and others I'm gonna to turn to a panel of experts. So will the hours be the same next year, which is 9.30 to 3.42? The answer is yes. The hours will be the same uh, next year for the school. And are you doing anything to high school zones? The answer is no. There's no changes for high school zones. What will the student to teacher ratio be? You'd be happy to know Clay County ranks at the top in class size, meaning we have the fewest students in a class. Our ratio is well below the state average. The ratio for, um, for this age group is 22 is, is the maximum for that. Uh, will there be additional teachers? Yes. You can imagine this kind of thing uh, impacts a lot of different folks. It impacts some teachers, right? Because some teachers from the elementary schools then will, will wind up coming over here. So it's a, it's a whole thing. That's why we started in October. We're now in November. The goal would be to, to be to the point where we're planning for next year by January. And that means teachers, staff, the whole thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, related to how to organize this and make it work out for everybody. Uh, where will the sixth grade wing be? The sixth grade wing is in the back of the school where we, right now we're in the cafeteria right behind us, directly behind us is a building which we refer to as the 400 hallway. If you've been on campus, you may be familiar with that. So that sixth grade wing is directly behind that 400 hallway. So again, 32 classrooms, it's a, it's, a, it's a new build. You just can't see it because of the dark. Um, and so that'll be there. They wanna know, is the new building specifically for sixth graders? For con core content areas. So English, language arts, social studies, science, yes. Um, as far as electives, we're looking into that. Students may have to leave that building to attend some electives throughout the school year. So the question is, will sixth graders have lunch the same uh, during the same time slots and not have mixed times with seventh and eighth graders? We are working on that schedule, so we are working to um, cohort our students together for lunch as much as possible. 
One question is uh, about students participating in CTE electives, general electives, student activities, and sports. Yes, I think that's one of the benefits. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to the, the band instructor before, and uh, she it was before Mr. Summers was, was taken over there, and she was excited, right? Because now a student could start that process in sixth grade. Back in another lifetime, I was actually a junior high principal, which was seventh and seventh and eighth grade. I always felt like the student just got there. We just got them, you know, the the way we want them, and then they go to the high school because it's seventh grade year. I always called it the pancake effect. It's like the pancakes there, you flip it over, and then the student's gone, and not enough time for relationship building and doing the things that schools do well uh, in young people's lives. So that's one thing, that one benefit to it. So yes. Okay, my arm has to get longer. Uh, my child's currently in the gifted program. Typically the program goes up to sixth grade. Will that uh, be provided for sixth grade and middle school? Dr. Sanders, I think. <laughs> you have to come this way. We can't go outside. Hi, I'm Melanie Sanders. I'm the Director of Exceptional Student Education for Clay County. And our gifted services for sixth grade next year, if um, the students are at one of these junior highs, um, like Asbury Junior or Oak Leaf Junior, they may look a little bit different than the gifted services would have been at the elementary, but rest assured that they will still get gifted services. Normally in the junior high, the services look a little bit more like support facilitation. It's not usually a separate class like it is in elementary school, but we are also, um, you know, we are, we want to offer the best thing for these students. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll really try to tailor it to the students that will be joining the junior high and do the best we can to support them with that change. There's good questions. The building one story or two story? It's two story. 16 classrooms, 16, 16 classrooms. Will the sixth graders have lunch at the same time slots? I believe we've answered that. Will the new uh, building be open by February? No, it will not be open by February. It will be open by August uh, when we come back. Uh, I think I think a previous presentation, we had slides of it. Uh, it's exciting. They actually have a camera that takes a daily shot to monitor progress each day. So it's, it's just like, uh, you know, a person being born, you're watching the building come up around that time. Now, I did tell Miss Miss Ellis, it says it's all open on time, right? Like, that's always, if you're superintendent, you worry about these things. It's my job to worry about it. And they assure me that, yes, well, open on time. And the final question, is there going to be a process for varying students' home address? A lot of students uh, use friends' addresses and find creative ways to come into the Oak Leaf schools. I'll, I'll just tell you uh, that if there is a situation like that, of course, alert the school to that. I could just tell you as the principal next door, I actively looked into those types of things to ensure fairness and equity. You uh, you built a, a home in, in Oak Leaf, and so you want your children to go to school in, in Oak Leaf. You did that for a purpose, right? And shouldn't, people shouldn't be uh, circumventing the system in order to do that, because that actually deprives you as a homeowner who chose to come to Oak Leaf. And, and Oak, Oak Leaf just has such a great community feel to it um, that I'm very passionate about that issue. So I knew this was a really smart group because you did that so much faster than the last group. But if you do have a question and you say, I just didn't want to ask this question out loud, by all means, come on up. We're all up here. We'll wait. We'll answer every question you have. Again, we want to make this as painless as possible. Try to be uh, as thoughtful as, as possible with this transition. I think the Oak Leaf community uh, has been through this before, so they kind of understand the process. And so we appreciate your patience. We appreciate your support of Clay County Schools. we got a great school system it's because we've got great parents who participate in their child's education. And you being here today demonstrates that to me. So thank you so much for being here. And again, if you have any more questions, come on up and ask. But thank you so much for being here this evening.